I remember you texting us and you reached out to you know me and some of Tristan who was on here in the card hobby and you're like, hey guys, I'm about to bid a million dollars on a card. Yeah. Hey guys, Troy here back with another video today. We have a really exciting one. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. If you can tell by the title, we're here with a, a big time guy, a guy I've known since I was a kid, really one of the people responsible for getting me into sports cars in the first place. We have Darius. Happy to be here, Troy. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been watching your videos. You've been doing a great job with everything. So I'm, I'm honored to be to be on. Oh man, it's an honor to have you here. I mean, if you can just tell by the cards in front of us alone, it's great to have you here. And I just think it'd be nice for the viewers and everyone to hear kind of your journey. So where did it all begin? How did you first even get into sports cards? Yeah, so uh, I actually remember the first pack I got was just a pack of like 2001 Tops football. I was at Sports Authority with my mom, probably six years old at the time. And uh, there was actually a shop two blocks up from my house um, in the sunset in San Francisco. So I used to go there, you know, just kind of a little kid. Every few weeks I'd ask my parents to like buy me packs and um, would then like sort of take cards to school and got some of the other kids into it. Um, but then I think most, most kids kind of got like phased out of cards, you know, maybe, you know, 10 or 15, you know, other stuff going on when you're a teenager. But I always uh, stuck with it. This is probably my favorite Durant card. It's it's not my most my most valuable one, but it's just it's by far the nicest card in terms of eye appeal. So I actually got this card in probably like December of last year. Um, I saw it come up on actually I had actually seen it at the National, and I think Probstein was selling it. He was super overpriced on it, so I, yeah. but it definitely caught my eye at that time. And then he ended up listing it on eBay. So I sold some sold some stuff because I knew I had to have it. And then probably in about March of last year, I actually started to, you know, have some second thoughts, like maybe I'm going too hard on Kevin Durant. So yeah. I actually traded this card, um, got rid of it. Oh, I know this story. Yeah, and then I, and then I, you know, as soon as I traded it, I was having second thoughts, um, and I ended up getting it back probably in July of this year, and I'm super happy I did that. And it's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make sure I don't make the same mistake twice. When would you say you really started to take sports cards seriously though? Treating yeah. them more as like a business? <clears throat> For sure. Um, actually, I remember the exact time when it was. It was actually in 2018 when I went to the National. Um, so I went with a buddy of mine, Chris Jackson, uh, Action Jack Cards on Instagram. Um, and you know, I'd never been to the National before. The only show that I had been to was, they used to do a TriStar show in San Francisco uh, once a year. And so that was the only show that I would do. And so that was like the sort of the only time that I had to like meet collectors and, you know, just really do stuff in person because everything else I was doing, <clears throat> excuse me, was online. Um, but going to that national for the first time, like you always hear about it, like you need to go to the national, like it's, you know, it's crazier than you would even imagine. Um, and it was just, it, it was exactly that. Like it was in uh, Cleveland was the first year I went and uh, we were lucky enough to get a, a table set up and it was just like nonstop foot traffic the whole time. And like, it just really opened my eyes to like actually how big like collecting was. It just sort of opened my eyes to like the possibilities and to just sort of the scope of, of like what it actually was. So I actually got this one right around the prism boom. So yeah. I, I sort of probably didn't buy this at the best time. Um, but it was one of those cards and I actually over probably overpaid for it at the time um, But it was one of those cards. It's a gold. It's of a premier young player I just figured pay up now or probably never see one again And you mentioned the possibilities on that note if anyone's seen from the title of this <clears throat> video It's led you to a pretty crazy place buying the two most expensive cards in basketball history if I'm not mistaken Can you explain that story? Yeah, so, you know, I still can't even, almost can't believe it myself. The LeBron story was uh, actually probably two weeks after I had started at Alt. My CEO, Lior, um, he's on Instagram under Gems Only 8. Uh, he, you know, he told me, we're going to go after this LeBron card. And like, at first I was like, you know, I, I was just like, is he serious? Like, you know, this is kind of crazy. And, you know, there was a lot of like, we didn't know what the card was going to go for. It, it was just like, sort of the first big card to hit the market at the time when like, you know, the, the hobby had really started to boom. Um, and so we ended up buying the card for 1.8 million. Yeah, so I actually got this uh, last September 
uh, right after the national last year. That was actually one of the cards that I was looking to get at the national last year. It was like a really nice high grade LeBron rookie auto. And I actually didn't even think that it, you know, I would have possibly been able to get a 10 of this card. And then actually two months later, uh, the Giannis logo man was coming up for sale. And by this point, you know, the fund was already underway. The LeBron was obviously the first big purchase. So when the Giannis came around, like, you know, it was kind of almost like expected that we were gonna be at least be in the running for it. Um, and so that one ended up going for $12,000 more. So 1.812 um, and re-breaking the record. And so, yeah, so just, you know, being the person that was basically doing all the bidding on Golden and, you know, pricing the card and doing the, the research on it, it was, you know, it was awesome. And just, you know, something that, that I still can't really truly believe. This is one of those cards that I've always wanted and I probably waited a little too long to get. Um, so it ended up costing me a pretty penny, but I think this, a Kobe refractor and a few other cards were just, you know, always on my like bucket list of cards to get to pick up a nice card that, that actually will be in my collection for a long time. I remember you texting us and you reached out to, you know, me and some of Tristan who was on here in the card hobby and you're like, hey guys, I'm about to bid a million dollars on a card. Yeah. And I just couldn't even believe what was happening. What was that like rush like? You mentioned it was scary, but like when you're pressing that button to bid a million and a half dollars, what's that feeling like? Yeah, I mean, I do have to say it's it's pretty, it's a little bit anticlimactic, you know? Yeah. Like, because in the end you're just pressing a button. Um, I'd say when it actually really hit me was like holding the card, like from the point of bidding and then, you know, seeing everything from, you know, us wiring them the money and, you know, just like the amount of just, you know, thought and like care that went into actually transferring the card to us because, you know, we had paid $1.8 million for it. Holding it, that was like the point when I was just like, it was just really hard to like comprehend it and it was just kind of crazy. Like I'm holding the most expensive basketball card ever. So I think that was like probably the point when it, when it really kind of like hit me. Wow, SGA one of one. Now that's a card I definitely would want to have in my collection. Yeah, um, to be honest, I'm not huge on Shea. Uh, mm. I think he's a great player, and I think he's probably best suited to be like a number two guy. I know we both we both sort of agree on that front. But like you said, it's a black one of one, and you know he's probably one of the top, probably like top ten up and coming players in the league. Uh, it's definitely a card that that you know I envision holding on to a long time and just sort of enjoying Shea grow as a player. What have you seen of how things have changed in the past two years? Where do you see this going? Basically, just what do you think of the market right now? For sure. Um, I think, you know, I think it's great the amount of people and, and interest that that is coming to the market on a daily basis. Like it, it used to be the type of thing that you were almost embarrassed to like have people know that you collected yeah. cards. Like, you know, me and Chris always joke about this. When we were in college, like we, we hid our cards under our under our dorm bedroom under our dorm bed and we used to like kind of walk to the post office to mail our cards because you know you didn't really want people to know what you were doing but now it's like every single day there's more there's new people hitting me up and they're super interested yep so i was actually six years old at the time wow. um i remember i remember it happening like it was yesterday my dad uh took us to that card shop i mentioned uh you know just one day after like baseball practice and i was opening the pack as we were pulling up to my into into the front of our house and uh I was like, oh my God, Willie Mays. And like, you know, it probably took me 10 minutes to realize that it was actually signed by Willie Mays. Yeah. But you also mentioned people get into the hobby, like a bunch of new investors, new people who are enjoying it, which is a great thing. What advice would you give them? Obviously you're a person who's accomplished a lot, as you can see right here. If you were giving advice to yourself, if you're starting now or anyone on the channel who's watching, what advice would you give them? So that's a good question. I think uh, the most important thing is to do your research before um, before really diving into it. And I think the biggest thing would then probably be having somebody that you can go to for your information. Because if you're just starting on your own, there's so many places to that you have to look. You know, if you're trying to look into a specific card, you want to look at the sales, you want to look at the pop report, you know, you want to actually like do your research on the players, the types of players that, that are like good to be buying cards of. So there's just so many variables to it. And 
and I think that's what alt will solve for is like having a single a single source of truth that people can go to to do all of their research. You also mentioned alt. You've touched upon a couple things. What are you guys doing? What are the stuff? What is the stuff you hope to bring to the hobby uh, going forward? Yeah. Um, so again, I think the biggest thing is just transparency um, on one end, which is like I've already touched on a few times. Is there's a lot of fake fake information, fake data out there. So if you go on eBay, you know, you might see, it's just very easy to manip manipulate the market. Um, you know, we don't know what sales are real and what's not. So with Alt, we are actually gonna be an exchange and we're gonna validate all transactions. So everything eventually will be happening through Alt. So with our vaulting service, we will only allow you to, to sell or transact on Alt if we have the cards first. You know, if you think about eBay, one of the other big pain points is like return. So if, you know, right now, like who's a good example of a, of a guy that people are having buyer's remorse, maybe Jaw because he just yeah. got hurt. So, you know, you buy it, you bought a Jaw or you sold a Jaw card two weeks ago, he gets hurt, now everybody's, you know, returning it because the price have gone down. If we're the ones validating all the transactions and we have all the cards, you know, there's no way that can happen. On that end, it's really just going to, you know, again, bring a lot of transparency, get all like the bad sort of a lot of the bad eggs out of the out of the hobby and just, you know, make everyone's experience better from that end. I think there's going to be so many great things happening with the hobby going forward. And I see you yourself, but also all being a big part of that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please like and comment down below. We would really appreciate it and we're gonna keep the videos coming. Thanks again.